Now, here's Chief Meteorologist Tony Petrarca with your live Pinpoint Doppler 12 Futurecast. I remember my meteorology professor a long time ago telling me that, or telling our class that the, the art of severe weather forecasting is to know when to be concerned. Well, we, I continue to be concerned about these potential impacts uh, from Sandy in the uh, Monday uh, Tuesday time frame. Now, multiple things to be watching very closely, but what has me most concerned would be the coastal flood potential. If you live along the South Shore that normally floods during whether it be hurricanes or nor'easters, you really want to be on guard. You want to stay tuned for the forecast because it would not surprise me if some sort of evacuations are considered. We're not at that stage yet, but we ought dealing with a storm that's two, two and a half days away. Structure wise, it does not look as healthy. Uh, the storm has weakened a bit. Here's the center of circulation right here. This does not surprise us. We were expecting this to happen. What's going on really is the storm is under reconstruction from going from tropical to non-tropical. In other words, uh, the structure of the storm is changing. It's going to turn into something else, but still be a storm. The magnitude won't change. It may not be classified as a hurricane in a couple of days, but it will still have hurricane force winds. So just kind of clear that up. Should down the road the storm not be called a hurricane anymore, it will still be a dangerous storm. All right, here is the breakdown. Uh, not escaping this storm, it will not head out to sea. Major impacts are likely here. We're going to try to fine tune the magnitude of the, the rainfall amounts, the wind speeds, the coastal uh, flood surge uh, forecast. But right now, I would say it's at least moderate, bordering on major. So the coastal flood concerns and power outages that will be equal to Irene or perhaps even worse and, and power outage wise we all know Irene was no picnic last year and we may be dealing with something like that or even worse. Meanwhile, it's nice sunshine in Providence, temperature at 61. I'm going to go through the forecast real quick next 24 hours because it's really fairly quiet. Not much going on. No storms across the area. A few patchy clouds. It'll be quiet tonight if you're heading out. Uh, maybe going to Roger Williams Park. Check out the jack o lantern Spectacular. Enjoy it. Enjoy the fine weather while we have it. 52 at midnight. Tomorrow morning looks fine. Uh, sunshine by 11 a.m. 62. Very comfortable day to do any kind of a last minute preps. And maybe taking some of the lawn furniture in. Boaters, maybe if you still have the boat in. You'd certainly want to take it out now. 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 65, and 5 o'clock in the evening, sunshine, 61. All right here are the Bahamas. The envelope of uh, tropical storm force winds extends well beyond the center of the storm, so aerial coverage is large. As far as the forecast track paralleling the east coast, and then rather than taking that traditional turn back out to sea, it takes this hard hook to the left coming on shore across uh, the, uh, the New Jersey coastline uh, either late Monday into early Tuesday. Notice, and, and this is a little deceiving, uh, you know, we don't have this yellow area covering southern New England. The center of the storm is forecasted to be well to the south and west. But look at the number of computer models that we use to predict storm tracks. They're, they're in two clusters, they're in two camps. Uh, one is further to the south and one is further to the north near New York City. And quite simply, the, the southern track would be less severe, but the northern track up in here would be more severe. And there's a very real possibility that this may drift a little further to the north and have more of an impact on our weather. The, the possibilities of landfall lie anywhere in this pink area from Block Island down through the Chesapeake Bay. And this kind of a path would put more of an onshore wind. In other words, the, the wind direction would be piling water up along the coastline during multiple high tide cycles. And the high tide times, uh, both during the morning and the evening, hours of Monday and Tuesday are right there. So each high tide cycle brings the potential for some significant uh, flooding. And that's why a track like this to our south and west would not be good. The wave forecast, these are computer models that predict wave heights offshore, are just tremendous. And this wave energy would be propagating towards the south shore on top of an already abnormally high tide. So here is the storm timing. Uh, Sunday is fine, at least on land, though the seas will start to pick up. And then everything going downhill in a big way on uh, Monday and Tuesday. Seven day outlook reflects that. So quiet tomorrow. A couple of showers late on Sunday. Not a big deal, though. The seas will be building. And then uh, ground zero, if you will, come Monday and Tuesday. Uh, temperatures in the upper 50s uh, to lower 60s. I want to take this storm system lightly as the potential to be severe. We have two and a half days to kind of iron out the fine details. Things can still change, but feel highly confident of a big impact here in southern New England. All right. Thanks, Tony.